Hey garden maters, welcome to Corner Homestead. So I'm back in the kitchen again to make another salve. I made the calendula salve a while back. If you haven't already watched that video, please feel free to go back and view it. The calendula salve is great for cuts and scrapes and burns and things like that. Well today is another long process and I'm working to start my comfrey salve. Now the first thing I do when I go out and pick the comfrey, when I cut the comfrey leaves, I bring it in and I dehydrate them. I put them in my dehydrator at 125 degrees and I let them dehydrate for between 8 to 10 hours. You want to do them slow and low so that you don't lose the beneficial medicinal properties of the plant. So I keep them in this bag. I have it marked comfrey. And the leaves will be so big that it's impossible to put them on the tray all in one piece. So I do have to cut them. But when they come out of the dehydrator, this is what you're looking for. They're crisp. If you can hear, they are crisp. And they're still very green. And they definitely have the comfrey smell. So once these are dehydrated, we do this next step. I've taken two cups of comfrey leaves and I've cut them into small pieces and put them into this jar. Typical quart mason jar, two cups of comfrey leaves. To this I'm going to add three cups of olive oil. Now this is the olive oil I use only because I get it from BJ's. Um, it's the Bertoli brand and it's not organic but it's about you just get what you're able to afford. So here I have my two cups of comfrey leaves. And this is one cup of the olive oil going in. Here is number two. And number three. Okay, so I have put the lid on. I'm going to take this into my pantry. Put it in a cool dark place. Get it out every now and then to give it a shake. But pretty much, it's going to sit for three weeks. So this will take a little bit of time. But of course, for this video purpose, there'll be no time at all. And we'll be back. Hey, Garden Maters. It has been almost four weeks instead of three. And I have let my comfrey marinate in the oil for that long. You can probably see the difference. It has gotten very dark. This is exactly what we want. So like I said, I have had this in the pantry now for just about four, four and a half weeks. Because like I said, you really don't have to give it a time limit. The longer it stays, the more it infuses. But you don't want it to go too, too long or it is a chance it could get rancid. So one thing you will need besides the beeswax, I am going to be using a little bit of vitamin E. I like to put that into the the comfrey salve, it is not necessary. You do not need to put it in. It is just an additional thing I like to do because it helps make the skin a little softer when you use the salve. And of course you are gonna need some jars or some tins to put the salve into once it is mixed up to cool. This time I'm using this size tin. These tins here I got at Dollar Tree. They are the two, they're 2.9 inch, um, not sure how many ounces it holds, but like I said, 2.9 inch from Dollar Tree in packs of two. I've got eight, four packs of these, so a total of eight tins, so I'm going to be using them. If I have any extra left over, I'll just pull out the two ounce tins that I used from before. So get some tins or some jars, whatever you want to put the salve into. That's all you're going to need, the, the tins the beeswax, and optional vitamin E, and of course, your comfrey infused oil. So let's get going and get this salve made. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, just into my big measuring cup, I'm gonna open the comfrey oil. I'm just gonna get it all strained. Oh, you can see it's, very nice and green. 
get all that comfrey out of the jar. So I'm just going to let everything sit just like that for a few minutes, give it time to drain, and then we'll go to the next step. In the meantime, if you don't have a double boiler, you can do this, which is what I do. I take a pan, just put a little bit of water into the bottom. But this is just a stainless steel dog dish, and this is the exact same one I used last time when I was making the calendula. But it fits perfect on top of this pot. So with that little bit of water, I'm able to do a double boiler this way. The first thing I'm going to do is take my infused oil. This is ended up making two and a half cups of the infused comfrey oil. So we're just going to pour it all into the pan. And you may see some little impurities at the bottom, which is just the dried comfrey. And it's perfectly okay. Doesn't harm a thing. It's a very, very pretty shade of green. So now that this is in and it's going to start warming, I've got two 400 IU of the vitamin E. I'm just going to squeeze it into it. Be careful if you're using a knife like I am. So it's not much vitamin E at all. It's optional. You don't have to put it in. Another thing you want to do before you even decide to do this is make sure you use old, something old to stir it with um, that you are not going to be using for food any longer. I keep this spoon and this one dog dish <laughs> just for salve making purposes because it's very hard to clean the beeswax when you're finished. I mean, it does clean, but it takes a little bit of time. And I do find that SOS pads or, um, you know, just Brillo pads in general work the best to clean everything afterwards, especially on the stainless steel. So whatever you're using, I would suggest you don't use it for food any longer or even for your pets. Just to play it safe. So now this is warmed up a little. I'm going to go ahead and add one quarter cup of beeswax. You can smell the comfrey. Mm -hmm. You can smell the comfrey. Now we just want to mix this and keep stirring it until all of the beeswax has melted. So I think you can see once it starts to melt, it does it pretty quickly. So now we're going to get ready and pour it into our tins. Okay, so the only thing I'm going to do is just pour them into the tins. I always do it over an old towel as well. Just in case there is a little bit of spilling. I'm not sure how many I'll get out of this, but we're about to find out. Okay, so there we have, I managed to get eight, all eight of the bigger tins that I bought, and I had to go back in and get one of the two ounce tins. Now this one's going to show the most impurities because that was from the bottom. It's not really impurities, say, it's, um... It's just very little specks of comfrey, which is perfectly fine. So we're going to let this all harden, and we'll have a look at it later when it's all cooled, because right now they are very hot. So we'll be back when they're all cooled, and we'll get a final look. Okay, so it's the next day, and... So they are definitely cooled off and they are hardened. The color is so pretty. Such a pretty green. So now let's take a better look at it. Pardon the ticking clock, but I wanted to come in here into the living room. It is the brightest in the house and I just wanted to be sure that you could really see this very well. The color is just so pretty. It is definitely creamy. It's not, um, 
I don't know if you can see it on my finger. It's a, like I said, it's soft and you want it soft because when you put it on, it feels very nice, very nice. It does have the comfrey smell. You would think it would be oily because of the olive oil, but it really isn't. But it uh, pretty much absorbs right into the skin, which is very nice. So again, it is for pain, arthritis, joint pain. Like I said, they call it the broken bone healer because they used to put the full leaves, they'd wet them and put them over broken bones and supposedly it would heal your bones. But I definitely wanted it for well, the pain and arthritis properties that it can give you. If you wanted to make it harder, add more beeswax, you could. I really don't think it needs it. The way it is right now, it, it's just perfect. It's a soft, very soft salve. And that's the way you want it when you want to put it on. Oh, there you go. See that? It just comes out very soft. So, yeah. I think this is definitely a keeper. Okay, so we got quite a bit of salve out of the little bit that I decided to infuse, the little bit of oil. How I ended up with three cups of oil and only in the beginning and two and a half cups in the end is because the comfrey, because it's dehydrated, when you put it into the oil, it's going to absorb a little bit of the oil, of course, as it rehydrates. You can use um, fresh comfrey if you just pick it, but I think the dehydrated works best because the longer it infuses, the better it is. And when you're cooking this or melting the bees away, you can really smell the comfrey coming out, which is, it's just great. So the beeswax that I used, I did get this off of Amazon. It's the same beeswax I used on the calendula salve, but it's the white beeswax pellets. It doesn't really have a name brand, but if you go onto Amazon and you're looking for beeswax, what I did, I ended up just buying the cheapest bag of beeswax I could find. It is pure and it is organic. You don't want anything artificial. If you know a beekeeper, you can get beeswax from them, which is even better than getting it off of Amazon. I don't know any beekeepers, but that is a great way to go if you need the beeswax. Whether it be yellow or white beeswax, there really is not a preference because the salve is going to take on the color of the comfrey or even the calendula. So it really doesn't matter what color you use. So that's it. That's all there is to making the comfrey salve. If you grow comfrey, I hope you decide to make it. It's a very easy plant to grow, and it's a very easy salve to make. And if it helps to get rid of just a little bit of joint pain or arthritis pain, it'll be all worth it all in the end. So please, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I love to have you as part of my community, and I always like to watch the garden maters grow. And please feel free to share and like the video so others may benefit from it as well. So until next time, love you all. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you on the next video.